All right, so today I wanna to walk you guys through one of the most commonly requested aspects that you're going to have to get really good at if you wanna get your tracks placed in TV shows, movies, and commercials, and that is the concept of building your tracks, developing them, providing forward momentum, so that at any point in the track, there's always this sense that something big and bigger is coming just around the corner, okay? So this has to do with stacking up new instruments, uh, adding new elements into your track as you move along, also including transitional effects. So in this brief uh, breakdown of this track that I'm working on right now, I'm gonna show you basically how I go from almost nothing, a singular uh, electronic piano track, to a full-fledged chorus, just a massive chorus that sounds really huge, and how I basically built it from almost nothing to a big uh, crescendo at the, at the end here. Now, this is not a complete track. I would probably extend this uh, about twice the length. I would add a second verse and have a second chorus and maybe even a bridge on there. But I'm in the beginning stages, stages of this track, and I wanted to just show you this is essentially becoming, and it has become for me, a second nature when I start a track, when I'm building my uh, music for TV film sync licensing. And it's not much different if you want to you know, produce a pop track or a hit track or get your song placed with an artist. You, no matter what, have to have this forward momentum, this sort of building that always happens. And usually... In the sync licensing business, it's usually the end of your track that needs to be the biggest, right? So you kind of start with the smallest, go to a big chorus, break it down for another verse, build it back up, and your last chorus should be the biggest part of your track. It has the most elements, has the most excitement, and the most energy going on. Typically, that's what you're going to be asked for in the licensing business. Of course, there's always exceptions to that rule when you're requested for certain things. But I'm just going to play you guys through this track first so you can kind of see and get a feel for how it feels from the beginning all the way to the end. And then I'll go through and break down exactly how I built up this track. We're not going to go into specific plugins um, um, in terms of the sample libraries or the effects, compressors, delays that I used. I really want you just to take the general concept of building a track moving forward. And that's what I really want you to, to get from this track. So let's go ahead and hit play and we'll take a, take a listen to it. As you can see, we go right back down to the uh, very small piano part. Now, this is not something I usually recommend because uh, sometimes you can really get into trouble when you're just repeating the same four bar progression over and over again. Your track can start to sound really loopy, but I really wanted to put this tutorial together for you guys so that you could see I do have the same exact uh, four bar progression repeating the entire track through, this four bar right here. It is exactly the same the entire time through. But as you were listening to that track, you probably didn't feel like we were getting stuck anywhere, like the track was getting too loopy. And that's because there's so much stuff being added to this progression as we move it along, right? But if you want to really make sure that you're staying away from even getting close to that sort of loopy feeling where your track isn't progressing, uh, make an eight bar progression. Maybe you would extend this out to an eight bar progression or you could even go to a 16 bar progression. The longer your progression is, the less likely you're going to get stuck in that loopy sound. But I wanted to show you that it's possible there's not too much variation with this main riff um, with these chords there. I just like these chords. They I just fell in love with them when I found them and I was just you know stumbling across the piano and I love that. So I decided to build up those uh, chords right there. And as we got into the chorus, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. 
But as you can hear, there are some backing vocals that I started throwing in here just to add a little change on this, the first repeat of this chord progression. Not a lead though, just a sort of backing vocal that really fit into the key and the sound of what we were doing here. Um, th most of these uh, vocals I get from Splice. Uh, Splice.com is a great source for a lot of these vocal samples. basically just adding a real quick, easy um, drum uh, beat to this very simple piano progression, not much going on there. I did add a couple of these interesting little click sounds. I'll show you the drums isolated. It kind of just has this really cool, interesting feel. Um, so it's not just the four on the floor kick with a snare, boom, bop, boom, bop. I want to have a little bit more of a rhythmic variation in the middle there. So just a couple of these little clicks to add on the 16th notes, just to add a little bit of that variation to it. Then, because we're not wanting to repeat the same thing over and over again, we take a little pause here, um, and then we reset into this verse. I guess you could call this kind of a pre-chorus. Um, we add the bass, as you see here, and we add um, the vocals back in that you heard just for a second. We tease them in the beginning, and then we want to bring them back in um, so that we can start building up this pre-chorus section. Let's go and get into all of this interesting stuff going on here. So as you can see at the top, you know, pianos are just repeating, just the bass comes in. Drums, basically the same as you heard before. This is where all the variation and the sort of interest gathering is happening is down here. Uh, we have this interesting vocal swell, another great one that I found from Splice. It just really fit this track really well. It was in the right key. I had this really cool just swelling effect to it, which I loved. It's almost like a pad sound, just a really cool thing. Easy sweep up, white noise sweep up, very basic. You can find this from any uh, sound effects pack out there. Then I have this interesting impact. It's kind of a cinematic big boom impact. And then to add the sort of, I call it the Disney magic, uh, when you have a big sort of release into a chorus like we have here, uh, having a white noise drop down like this, uh, or sweep down sometimes they call it, really adds that kind of sparkle to the top of the track. So I just threw that at the downbeat of this chorus. So when you add all of these together, these sort of transitional effects and the vocal effect, uh, this is what it sounds like. So, you know, it's not that intricate, just a couple of sounds that I threw in there, but I really wanted to, the reason why I threw those in there is that I really need to uh, foist this next section up really big because this is a section where we're really releasing into a big sort of anthem. You know, I, I see this as a sort of stadium kind of a, a song that's uplifting, inspirational, motivational. Um, and this chorus was kind of timid and small and not much going on, but I needed to have that contrast. So what, now that we're going into this larger than life stadium anthem sort of a feeling, you need to have something that lifts us up. And all of these transitional effects that I included in here are designed to do exactly that. So it's sort of a clue to the listener, something big is about to drop. And these are the kind of transitional effects you should definitely be integrating into your tracks. chord progression right we're still in the same chord progression but this feels different we feel we're like in a new place it's like we've seen the same chord progression in a new light that's the whole idea here with this um this chorus so the big thing you might have noticed is obviously the lead guitar um i basically doubled it up one's a little bit cleaner so you can get a little bit more of the tone coming in the other one has a little bit more distortion but a very simple guitar lead section <laughs> two are stacked up there a lot of times uh, if you need a more clarity and something to punch through especially this lead guitar part because it's so important to this course sometimes you can double up your instruments and kind of get a little bit more of a thicker sound that way 
Um, I threw on a live piano. This is obviously the electric piano, piano up here. Um, it has that cool indie sort of a, a feel, but I did want a big, again, we're now opening up. We want this sort of big wide open space kind of feeling. And I, I thought that a, um, an acoustic piano was the only way really to do that with a sort of nice sharp, um, hard um, hammer hit from, the, um, from a big live acoustic piano. And as we transition now into the beat section of the course, we did use the same uh, riser and the same sort of Disney magic uh, white noise crash down uh, for that downbeat right there. Uh, drum beat, um, uh, we obviously took out these kind of uh, intricate 16 note clicks that we were having in the uh, verse. I really wanted this chorus to just kind of have more of a driving feeling. Um, and again, go back to that big uh, stadium feel. I did start throwing some shakers though, left to hard and pan them out hard left and hard right. So that basically immediately kind of uh, stereo spreads out the chorus a bit. It's one of the things that I like to do in a lot of my tracks. Also adds that forward momentum is as you get to the bigger part of your track, you really want your mix to kind of start to spread out a little bit more wide uh, into the left and right um, uh, areas of your of your um, uh, stereo spectrum there. So that's one of the things that I do is percussion is great to th throw out there. It's definitely one of those things that can definitely spread out your track quite a bit. <laughs> And adding these accent claps, snaps on every other snare. And then at the second half, I did add the second um, sort of, it's like a swelling accent snare. Again, just building. We always want to build something forward. This is not a lot that I threw on there on top of it, but it does add um, quite a bit of forward momentum that in the verse drums, it feels so much smaller, right? Add those live uh, hi-hats and, and crash cymbals as well, of course, so they get a little bit more of a live drummer feel. So that's one of the ways that I did that in the uh, chorus there, just to kind of bring it up uh, quite a bit in intensity. Uh, added some new vocals. This is just a high, uh, great vocal I found again from Splice that just fit this beat uh, really well. Very simple, not much to it. <laughs> but when you throw it on top of the track in the right place, it just adds that, again, that magic, that sparkle, that's something that just lifts up this um, course um, to a higher place. So as we pr proceed to repeat this course, don't want to repeat it again. We've already heard that first part. So one of the biggest things that you'll notice is I threw these distorted guitars. They're synthetic. They're um, MIDI guitars. But I ended up throwing these uh, power chords underneath it. And then added some 16th note uh, tambourine uh, loops right here. That cinematic, really epic, uh, dynamic feeling that you get from that big part of the chorus back to the start of the track is essentially where you should be shooting for with your tracks. For the most part, of course, there's always exceptions to this rule if you're requested to do minimal music that stays about the same the entire way through, then this wouldn't apply to you. But for the most part, no matter what your genre is, hip hop, rock, EDM, uh, orchestral, obviously, um, uh, corporate, this is usually what you're going to be going for is you really want to have these dynamics in your track. You start with something a bit smaller. Obviously, you could start with the chorus if you wanted to bring it back down and go back up. There's a many different ways that you can achieve this, but you do want to have this sort of variation within your track and you need to for sure have the forward momentum, something that really adds interest and pulls the track forward. And as you can see with this example, even a four chord uh, repetitive um, chord progression 
you can do it. You can absolutely do it, but you got to do all the heavy lifting with adding new elements and having those transition uh, effects uh, and really adding uh, a story basically to your track as you move it along and really lift it up all the way to the very end. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. I hope you found this very useful and valuable. Please leave a like if you did and make sure you do subscribe. I have useful videos like this on my channel every single week, Mondays and uh, Wednesdays, so don't miss out on them.